What's up, everybody? Once again, it's Brand Man Sean, and this video is brought to you by BrandManNetwork.com because I signed myself. Now, this snippet of an interview is one of my favorite snippets. When I'm talking about the interview I did with Spectacular Smith, this is my favorite portion of that because the information that he gives on why a lot of artists fail, right? Especially those creative artists is something that's really probably going to change the way you think about the business as a whole. I'm just going to go ahead and let you get into it. And we're going to talk at the end. It's the mat work. What's the difference between being an entrepreneur and a musician? Hmm. I mean, I definitely think it all depends. It's, it's, it's two type of musicians. You have musicians that's all artsy and all they care about is the craft. And then you have the musicians that understand the business. Nice. So, the ones who's just all artsy and like musically and all that type of vibe of, of what they consider themselves as, they're more of, it's really more like of, of a puppet, honestly. It's like, you know, when, when somebody decides to pull your screens and make you jump or whatever, like you really at the next person becking call, it's, it's up to, to them unless you really well, you still got to know the business is hard. So the, anybody who's just a hundred percent on the creative side is like, I feel for them because it's not longevity. You got to wait for somebody to do stuff for you. Right. Yeah. Some, some, some pull it off, but majority of the people don't. So you'll see somebody like spike, like they have this huge career and then they just flatline and you never hear from them again, or they have this huge career. And then the label decide they don't want to deal with them no more. They cut them off, drop them from the label. And you never, they never make a comeback mm. versus the artists who understand the business. They might have a huge spike and they end up signing somebody else. And now they got a huge spike and like it lives on like that. Or the people who did make that huge spike, they took advantage of the relationships of the business and they set themselves up for, for a bigger, a bigger uh, future. So I would definitely say for an uh, entrepreneur side, it's kind of the same thing. It's like, you always got to reinvent yourself. You always got to be creative. You always got to figure out how to touch the people. It's like, it's the same thing, right? And just becoming better and better every single day. Like if you look at everybody who's successful in music as a musician, they all jumped into the entrepreneur side. If you look at Rihanna right now, she's killing it off of her cosmetics. Or, or her makeup line or whatever you want to call it. You look at Jay-Z, he just hit a billion dollars. If you look at everything, I went and analyzed everything he's doing. I'm like, oh, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that, I'm doing that. I was like, I'm on my way. If you look at, if you really break down what Jay-Z did, right? He took his music stuff, he just didn't throw it to the side. He's like, all right, you know what? I'm doing concerts and I'm getting paid peanuts from the promoter. Even if I get paid a million dollars, they're making $20 million. So why the hell am I getting a million dollars just to perform? So let me come in on a partnership and partner with Live Nation. And then once I partner with Live Nation, learn it in and outs. And then from that point forward, I can launch my own stuff. So he ended up doing that. And then he ended up signing other artists and creating an agency part of it. Where now he's, he's representing sports talent. He's representing artists. And he said, listen, if you want to go on tour, I'm assigned to exclusive agreement. And now I get to make all the money. I cut you the check and now I'm the promoter. So this is all stuff that's in the works for me. So the same thing. So bum, you got Rock Nation put to the side. And then you have next is his streaming platform, digital, a digital product, which is my digital product, which is my academy. So he has his digital product. I have my digital product. His is streaming. Mine's is education. Then the next thing you look at is a product, do say, and then Ace of Spade. So a physical product right now, I'm in a process of launching a physical product It's not done yet. So I don't like to talk about stuff until it's done, ready to launch, but I can basically take the place of a physical product and just say, Hey, I got my agency, which is not really a scalable model. So that's why it's good to actually have a, a product, mm -hmm. right? So instead of actually having a physical product, I just got a, um, I just got multiple digital products for right now until I launch my physical product and then he have a huge real estate portfolio so same thing real estate current revenue passive income boom that's done so it's like everything that he did 
I'm pretty much doing the same thing, right? And he had a bigger, he had a a better chance to really scaling his up faster because he had his record label that took off and he took all that revenue that he earned from that, which was millions. And he re he did the right thing with his money, 4040 club, and he created partnerships and and he really like he's smart as hell. And and he really took advantage of his money versus the normal guy who's on the artist side don't do that they go buy cars and chains and and all this stuff instead of investing me i started from a sixty thousand dollar sound exchange check you know and turn it into millions within a year so i'm on a it's a slower bill for me um versus comparing me to jay-z the way he really just took off and made the decisions he made but honestly you really just one decision one partnership away from blowing the hell up and i understand that it's about products and it's about digital products. I mean, di physical products and digital products. It's the network. All right, so once again, that's one of my favorite portions of the interview I did with Spectacular, man. I mean, as a matter of fact, he was one of my favorite interviews that I've done thus far. You can find the full thing on brandmannetwork.com, but the most important thing that I hear out of this interview, one of my key takeaways, is the fact that artists cannot afford to be a puppet. Just point blank, right? Maybe there was a time, well, there was a time, right, where being a puppet was more beneficial, right, in terms of financials. Of course, you could always get more, but at least there was a time where being a puppet gave you a lot of money, right? But now we're in the industry, we're in the por portion of the music industry where you don't make as much per project or just straight off of music. So if you're a puppet, then... Like you have a very short career and you're not going to make as much. There were some million dollar, hundred million dollar puppets back in the day. Today, that might be a hundred thousand, two hundred thousand. So you got to figure out the industry. You have to be able to study in the same way that he broke his money down or the way that Spectacular is studying Jay-Z and breaking down some of the moves that he was going to make based off of what he saw. It's something that everybody should be doing. It's not even just a music thing, right? It's something no matter where you are, you should be able to be able to study and build a blueprint based off of what you see and move it from there. But you have to know the business regardless. Because the thing is, as he said, you have the entrepreneurs who really flip it. You know, the Rihannas or people who might even flip the money they make from music and get completely out of music. But then you also have those artists who want to stay super artsy and things like that. But if you don't know, have the knowledge for certain things, you're still not going to even be able to maximize your artsiness, right? right? Your artistry. You need to be able to know a certain amount of things yourself. Of course, you'll have people around you on your team hopefully a real good manager or something like that to be able to really dig deep into things or know the industry and how things works but you have to have a certain amount of knowledge yourself because as a matter of fact you know you don't want your manager to be able to mistreat you or something like that because that's a situation that's happened again and again and again so I guess we'll end this one with number one, don't be a puppet. Number two, invest in knowledge and invest in other avenues of income. And with that being said, as always, this interview is brought to you by brandmannetwork.com because I signed myself. If you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button. If you like it, you might as well share it. And if you're not, subscribe. You know what to do. Hit that subscribe button.